it's a beautiful day today and that's great because I want to go film at some different locations and show you the different options that I would recommend to charge your Model 3 and try to figure out which one is the cheapest or which one might be the cheapest for you given your situation. Before then, we have a lot of stuff to take care of so let's get right to it. So Elon has stated before that supercharging will be free forever. Something that's unique about the supercharger is that it's free. It's not just free now, it's free forever. But unfortunately, the economics of it didn't work out. And nobody really knows how much it costs to install a supercharger, but a lot of people have tried to back into these numbers using their financial reports and any kind of previous statements that they've made on earnings calls or in the media. Most people landing on the $250,000 mark, which I believe was published back in 2012 or 2013. The idea now is a bit different, right? Because people are using superchargers in ways that they weren't originally intended and that is just their everyday charging. And this has led to some, some, some problems in the network, let's say. And one of these problems is when you use the supercharger too often, what happens is it actually can hurt your battery because the speed and the heat generated from charging so quickly will actually damage its ability to maintain a charge. One guy learned about this the hard way by his car automatically disabling his ability to use superchargers at the highest rate possible. Because what happens is Tesla wants to protect your investment and they want the batteries to last a long time. So it's important that they don't let you kind of abuse them. And remember, superchargers were designed for long distance travel. And so this guy was using it in an unintended way, or, you know, I don't know if you want to, be, you can be negative about it, but really, if you think about it, if you work somewhere and it is near your work, you're going to do it often. But doing that as your primary source all the time is going to be bad for your car. So it's important that you don't rely on superchargers 100% of the time. So the other issue is that the cost of running these things and maintaining them will continue to grow as more people use them and as they uh, try to add more of them. Uh, Tesla in 2017 said that they were going to try to double the amount of superchargers. I, I think they got close to that, but there are a lot of them now and they keep growing and growing. So this is an essential part of their infrastructure and they needed to have a way to make it financially viable. And I think it's still a great option to charge. And we'll take a look at that and a few other options here in a second. But when you think about it, a lot of us wanted this to be the case and just it would be the easiest thing. But even because of the battery issue, it's not going to be your best option. You're going to need other ways to charge. So let's jump over and take a look at some of those now. And for everyone wondering, these guitars aren't here just for show. I do play them. So the regular cost in San Diego where I live uh, for just charging without solar or anything else is 22 cents per kilowatt hour after a certain time in what they call super off peak. Now that is pretty expensive. The national average per kilowatt hour is 12 cents. So I'm using my data here because I want it to be direct relationship to all the other comparisons I'm doing. But in your case, you may actually find that charging at home, uh, just using your normal rates is gonna be a really good option for you. Now, of course, you'll have to install a, a charger, either a wall charger or an outlet. I think that the wall charger is great if you have a nice looking garage and you want it to be you know aesthetically pleasing otherwise just the outlet is fine and the outlet that Tesla recommends is the NEMA 1450 and in order to do that you may have to even upgrade your panel so the cost can get pretty high I paid almost two thousand dollars for mine because of the distance they had to actually run the wire when the wire itself is expensive so all those things considered your home is going to be your most convenient and and depending on your electricity rates, it may or may not be the cheapest. 
So another option is a public charger like the one behind me. This is from ChargePoint and it's one of the biggest ones in the US and the prices can vary quite a bit depending on your location. I've seen them here in San Diego anywhere from 25 cents up towards 60 cents per kilowatt hour. So they're definitely more expensive than some of the other options I have here. But something to consider also is the convenience. Now these happen to be near a new subdivision of these townhouses which may or may not give you access to build one of these in your home. So if this is happens to be near your location where you live or work it may just be the best choice so I'll put some links to some of the larger networks that exist in the US down below and you can kind of use those to gauge and find exactly what the rates may be in your area however I've not seen them be cheaper than either of the next few options that I'm gonna show you so a good option is a supercharger surprisingly and so looking at the data depending on where you live this could be a really affordable choice. Now one of the challenges is the busyness and how packed some of these are. I'm here at the one in San Diego and there are about six cars lined up that have been waiting here for 30 minutes to an hour. I chatted with a few people here. And that is insane because there are I think 12 or 14 stalls here and it really is the only one in San Diego County. So something to consider. Now if you live in say Los Angeles or other places where there are a lot of superchargers then this is going to be a good option for you and surprisingly just about the cheapest one out there which I didn't think was going to be the answer when I started doing this video and started looking at the data. So I'll put a map down that I built a link to the map that I built in the description below where it shows you every single state and what the rates are as well as other countries in the world that are currently published from Tesla and so all all of your charging with the Model 3 will cost money, but the convenience, depending on the location and, and the time it takes to do it and how busy it is, all those things play in. But really, this is a good option for a lot of folks. So you guys may guess this, but there are some free options as well, like the one behind me. This is from Volta, a company that's actually growing rapidly, has a ton of backing financially, and is really making this kind of interesting because it's free to charge here. Now, it's not a super fast DC charger or nearly as fast as a, say, a Tesla supercharger. So those are gonna be your, your faster options, of course. But this one's free, and what they do is they kind of show you an ad on the big screen while you're you're waiting which is which is really novel it's kind of like taking what Google and Facebook have done online into the physical world so I think that's really interesting and the challenge as you can maybe tell from the cars packed up behind me is that because they're free they are very busy and difficult to, to get into I've seen other places in LA that have them and a lot of them it's the same story they're always packed but if you happen to work or live near one or here's you know at a grocery store and you happen to be there I think this is a fantastic fantastic option, but just not one I'm sure you can really rely on, especially if you need to charge on a daily basis. And that brings us here to my house where I have solar panels installed. And this is gonna be your cheapest option to charge your Model 3, and or any Tesla for that matter. Now, the way I looked at this was I took the cost of the install and I subtracted the incentives, then I amortized that cost across the, the life of the, of the panels, the warranty, which is about 20 to 25 years, depending on what you, what you get. Then I looked at the percentage of energy that my Tesla, my Model S, uses each month. And then I took that percentage times kind of that, that monthly cost breakdown. After all it's said and done, it's just under, a little bit under, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And the Model 3 should be a bit more efficient than the Model S, so it should be even less. Now I don't have enough data from the Model 3 yet to calculate it exactly, but in any event, it's gonna be twice as cheap as the next cheapest option. Now, if you have the choice and you have a home where you can get solar and you're wondering how to do it, I'll put a link down in the description for the way I did it, where you submit your info to this website and all these different companies bid on it and they give you this really nice dashboard to kind of compare and contrast and see what the best choice will be for you. Now, I know not everybody can do that, and so that's why I wanted to explore those other options with you in the video here. Let me know what you guys decide what your choices are and why. And if you want to be a part of this and have a, a tighter you know, discussion with the Teslanomics family, you can join us at teslanomics.co slash Jedi. It's a Facebook group that's private just for us that are really into this stuff and really want to dig deeper. So see you there and let me know what you guys decide. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys back here next time.
Olé!